Welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, we're Amanda and Lincoln, two hermits renovating a chateau in northern France. We're currently undertaking another renovation, one of the cottages. We also tend to 40 acres of land, have 15 animals, two kids, and just a tad of anxiety. Today we discuss budget. So I don't think we could have picked a worse day to film outside because we have this this wind. I just hope everybody could hear us. <laughs> hello, hello. Someone made a comment that Lincoln needs two microphones. <laughs> My nickname for him is Mr. Mumbles. <laughs> it came about because we were watching a movie years ago with Viggo Mortensen. Right. We could not hear him. <laughs> that was so, before you could turn on the, the subtitles the, Yeah, there were no closed <laughs> captions. Call him Mr. Mumbles. <laughs> he passed the torch to yeah, me. Yeah, he passed the torch, Mr. Mumbles. So, so budget is obviously our main concern. Concern. I mean, going into this project, we had hoped to do it on a very <laughs> minimal, very, very small, small minimal. budget because we wanted to save up for the, the chateau kitchen. Well, the easiest thing is, which what we're already planning on doing, regardless of, of budget, is reusing things that we have. The uh, wood that was the wall that I took down upstairs. We've got a whole bunch of beadboard that was set up downstairs. We have a lot of that and we're going to make uh, wainscoting out of that and probably use it in some other ways too. If you try to get materials like what they used back then today, it's <laughs> it would be cost prohibitive. Why not use the old stuff? It's better, you know? Right. And we went in search for some of that old stuff, hoping to find stone for the main cottage floor. We took a day and headed to a business that sells antique reclaimed stone floors and fireplaces, among other things. That's nice. 1200 euro for a big planter. Wow, that's beautiful. That's a nice fountain. This is 5,800 euro, excluding tax. Really cool. Living in France for someone like me who loves antiques and hunting for a bargain, this place wasn't for us. There are so many amazing items to be had just like these if you're willing to source them yourself and pick them up. Oftentimes, if an object is too heavy, people just want to get rid of it. So if you can pick it up, it's yours for free. See, we have granite like this in our orchard, so we could create a bench. Well, we got our estimate and the prices were way above what we are able to pay. Reclaimed sandstone would cost us 19,000 euros for 45 square meters of stone, which is a bit under 500 square feet. It would cost 6,500 euros for the reproduction. To compare, we went back to our local DIY store and found very similar reproduction tile, which will cost us around 1,300 euros. And we think for the cottage, look pretty great. So you can choose the different pieces and make the pattern. I'd want it to be a, probably as irregular as possible. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. You know, coming back here, this stuff doesn't look as bad. <laughs> yeah. It's actually, it's not that bad. I, it looks different on the camera versus what I'm looking at now, so it's it's hard it's hard to tell. That's the stuff that they used to the dark crowd. Right, so it's, it's sort of it makes it look a little pretend bit. that's our cottage floor without that rug and <laughs> the rest the of other, the, the other uh, stuff. It's kind of fun whenever we do a project to sort of dig through the outbuildings and well, see, yeah, well, what could you reuse? You feel better. We were actually having a discussion with our daughters about fast fashion. 
Right. Like they get mad at me sometimes if I go on Zara and I, you know, I'm like, oh, I think maybe I'll get that on Zara. And they're like, don't buy from Zara. It's fast fashion. Which means what? But what they do is they go on a website. What's it called? Vinted. Vinted. And they, they will buy old Levi's, which you, you could find in a vintage shop in Paris. And you'll find a pair of old Levi's for like 85 to 100 euro. And they're buying them on Vinted for five euro. Right. But the whole point is they like to upcycle. I noticed that when we go pick up packages, they have been wrapped in old packaging yep. or, or old, pa you know, it's just like they, you reuse things. Yeah, you reuse There's things. no reason to be going out and buying a new box to exactly. send something that, you know, especially something that's used. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it kind of, it's, it was kind of interesting to, yeah. to see that the younger generation, what the, what their Gen Z, we're Gen X, they're Gen Z. Are they? Well, what's a millennial? Millennials, like someone in their thirties. That's how out of touch we are. It made me happy that they're, they're thinking about this. That's what they're doing. You can find some great things. And it's kind of like when we go to a brocante. So we went to the brocante. We always come home with something. So we have to wait until all the vans are, everyone's loading up their things. So the professionals come. So we need to come get our dresser. Oh, look, it's already here. So this is what we bought. We bought a dresser. 90 euro. I had my eye on these, but these were sold. The stone troughs. So we went to our brocante this morning and bought a dresser for the cottage bedroom. They're going down the road. No, what they're, what they're doing. They're telling the dogs which way to go. So they were running through here, our property, and the dogs made a run for it up up through there so I think that they're, they're probably chasing a boar but these guys have no control over these dogs because they let them go and it's all radio controlled yeah, they, follow them in the they follow them in the vans and uh, I mean there's no controlling the dogs on our land well, that's like but they they cannot they these guys can get into serious trouble if the dogs chase something on our land and then they come and shoot. Oh, yeah. They're not allowed on our land and they know that. Yeah. So um, they could chase something off of our land, technically, but it's still really a, a screwy way to hunt, if, if you ask me. It's like 20 or 25 dogs. Yeah, it's a big group of dogs. I mean, they have like, um, like, it almost sounds like an air horn. I think they know the crazy lady lives here. Crazy cat lady. I think the deer went into. They went that way, yeah. That yeah. Was a couple hours ago. I think they're probably hunting boar because hunting season is. Um, it ends soon. It ends. All right, what were we doing? We were moving something. Yes. We always get interrupted. The life of a. <gasps> What is that? Show it, but it's a dead hare, and Lincoln's going to get a um, a shovel. Yeah. So hopefully it died of natural causes. 
Um, you had a heart attack? That's like the only thing. That could heart happen. attack. <laughs> I mean, it could have been guava. I hate to say it. I don't know if she could keep up with her. You're pretty fast. Yeah. So Lincoln just told me it hadn't been shot. So were there marks? No, and it was pretty stiff. I yeah. I don't know how quickly that happens, but yeah. it takes a little while. It doesn't take that long because I remember we had a cat in our barn who oh, yeah, was very was ill yeah. and I was gonna take it to the vet the next morning. It passed away overnight and it was very stiff the next day, so. I just put that there so when the dogs are out here, I'll I don't know if they're messing around here. Yeah, okay. Well, rest in peace, little... Yeah, it's sad, but... Little hair, I know. Cycle of life, right? It really is, but... Uh, we didn't want to leave it out here. Or toss it into the woods. This is a really nice, heavy platter. It feels like ironstone. And um, got that, and then this lovely little pitcher, which I'll use probably as a vase. It's got a one on it, not a seven, because the French don't make their sevens like that. Uh, and then this cool pot. It's hard uh, to find these pots with the lids, so we got one with a little lid on it. Love these. Yeah, there's somebody's name there. I don't know if it's, it looks like it's upside down. Yeah, it looks like there was a tag. After a bit of Googling, I discovered the label referred to a railway company that operated between 1855 and 1909. The headquarters were in Paris, but they were active in Normandy and Brittany. As for the signature inside of the dresser, I have no idea. Yeah, it's really pretty. Yeah, show the secret drawer. And look. See, all... It's all, all the patterns, the wood pattern matches up. And the drawer fronts. The yeah. Drawer fronts, yeah. And then you have the secret drawer. That's where you put your nachos. Yeah. <laughs> and going to this um, brocante is kind of like going to a wholesaler um, because you do see people. Well, everyone's there with a van. <laughs> everyone's, yeah, everyone's there with a van and they're going to resell what they what they purchased we try to go maybe once a month but not not usually so you had just had another um revelation a few minutes ago which we're not <laughs> sure we're gonna do it you... just came in my head so you think that's a possibility to uh, to turn it over and, and reuse it i don't know how likely it is that we can get remove it without damaging it breaking it because it's all nailed into those beams, so. Yeah. It might be easier said than done. <laughs> and like most things around here. Yeah. Uh, it's a possibility. We're almost at that point where we're ready to remove the floor. Right. So. We're getting, we're getting close to that. I'm not sure how we do it. Maybe we can, uh, I mean, there are some places where there are shins. Yep. To level the floor on the beams, but most places, the wood is right up against it, so we would need to somehow get it. If you bang it up a little bit so there's a gap, and then you could saw off the nails, you know? Yeah. Between that beam and the wood. 
But wouldn't it be like a puzzle to try to put it back together or? No, no, no. They're, I mean, most of these pieces are like five meters long. They're okay. Long. Oh, so they're long. Okay. And um, there, there's no, they're tongue and groove, so there's no particular way it has to go. Just yeah. one next to the other. Well, it's worth a shot. I mean, if we could save money by reusing the floor, that would be fantastic. Yeah. The other way we're thinking of saving money for our bathroom floor in the cottage is to reuse tile that we already have from the original chateau entryway. Right. And I think we're going to do that. We will be putting in new kitchen cabinetry. So mm -hmm. that will be brand new since we already bought our stove. We have mm -hmm. that. We already have a kitchen sink, which is a huge granite sink that sits in our basement right. currently we'll see how we can get it over there <laughs> yeah that's that's gonna and be, prop it up that's gonna be fun <laughs> um and then we'll see what else you know we we already have some furniture that was left here beautiful tables that we could use in the cottage so i mean obviously there's they're going to be expenses like beams the whole thing isn't going to be a ton of money simple stuff we have to hire outside help to to do the heavy lifting mm -hmm. i have a number in my mind he's got a number in his mind what we will do is tally up everything from top to bottom and when the cottage is finished we're going to give you right exactly what we spent to renovate that cottage so look for that video in the next five years. <laughs> yeah, we're It'll, still working on this cottage. <laughs> Lincoln's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Come on, Amanda. <laughs> gotta, gotta hoist this beam up. <laughs> no, we, we should be done, you know. Soon. This video would not be complete without a fun lesson in entomology, cluster flies. I'd never heard of them before moving to France. They're a nuisance and that's about it. They're thought to be native to Europe but found their way to North America in ships containing soil with the cluster fly host, the earthworm. They don't carry disease, cause damage, and they feed on plant nectar, not rotting corpses. They overwinter in attics and show up now as things are warming up. It's something we've learned to live with and often need to vacuum our giant windows daily. We have bananas. This is a special treat, Uvea. This is Uvea's favorite treat. Okay, Dominic. It's one banana per donkey. There you go. Oh, you're still chewing. I don't want to rush you. Okay, there you go. That's it. And people ask why we only give them um, one carrot or one banana a day. It's the amount of sugar. They shouldn't, they shouldn't have sugar in their diets, but it's okay once in a while. Sometimes we give them two bananas. Don't tell the farrier. <laughs> He'll get mad at us. All right, Lincoln's gonna give the donkeys water. Enzo's waiting patiently to roll in something. What are you gonna roll in today? Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have something to say, leave us a comment.